sweet friends to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy, my husband is Paul. We're an early retirement debt and mortgage-free couple living in the Hudson Valley area of New York. And basically our videos just show you how to have a full abundant life while spending less money. Today's video is near and dear to my heart. I wanna share some life lessons I have learned from my paternal grandmother, my Nona Louise. After we talk a little bit about my grandmother's frugal life lessons, we are going to share with you my Nona's Italian Sunday gravy recipe, basically pasta sauce. You will be amazed at how rich and delicious this slow simmered sauce is. So stay tuned for that as well. She was born 1901 in Salerno, Italy. She came to America as a child. She was literally educated till the eighth grade because that was very common back then. She went on to become a seamstress and work in a factory. She married my grandfather, Nicodemo. They had three children. They both lived through the Depression. My grandmother actually supported the family for three years as a seamstress in a factory when my grandfather could not find work. So this was a hardworking woman who really knew some tough times, but if you were to meet her, you would never ever know that. The sweetest, most kindest, generous woman Ever. My grandfather unfortunately passed in 1951 when my grandmother was just 50 years old. Then in 1955, she did come to live with us. What a blessing that was for me. Both my parents worked full time when I was a child. So I basically had my Nona, which I'm going to tell you now, we Americanized her name into Nanny. She helped raise me when my parents went to work. And the life lessons that she instilled in me have had such an influence on who I am today. My grandmother never wore pants. My grandmother never drove a car. My grandmother never returned to Italy. She assimilated herself in America bringing that Italian heritage with her and incorporating it into her American lifestyle. So let me share some of the life lessons on frugality that she taught me. Number one, the first thing that she taught me was that time is worth so much more than money. She spent time with me. She taught me how to cook. She taught me how to play card games. She would take me for walks. We would explore nature together. She taught me how to forage for food. And unfortunately, I didn't pay enough attention while she was showing me some of these things because unfortunately I don't have that skill of foraging food anymore. She taught me how to crochet. She taught me songs in Italian. She was filthy rich with time. I can't explain it to you any better than that. I think that is one of the greatest gifts that she could have given me. That instilled in me so many of my current loves today, where our focus is not so much on money, just as hers was not, but on being together, on doing things together, on experiences other than material goods. My grandmother lived with us till I was eight years old. And then at the young age of 73, my Nona married again. She literally lived down the road from us, which was a blessing. And the life lessons did not end then. Number two, she taught me that blessing others was the most expensive gift you could give anyone. She showed me how opening your home and showering others with food, with time, and hospitality was one of the most expensive gifts you could give someone. 
There were always cookies available. There was always a cup of tea available. She always would mend garments for anyone who needed a sewing project done. I remember how many times as a young girl, she would hem my dresses or hem my pants. And it was always done with a heart of joy, with a heart of happiness. She always found joy in doing for others. That was her gift. Her gift was just to shower blessings on others, not in the monetary sense, in the sense of what can I do for you that will bring a smile to your face. She was an amazing cook. One of the things that I have of her still is one of her cookbooks. This is the Betty Crocker Cookie Cookbook. It is not for the cookbook that I get excited. It is for these treasured handwritten recipes inside that cookbook. Her Italian cookie recipe, her struffoli recipes, all these time treasured recipes were in this book when I opened it. Number three, she believed people were rich with knowledge and it didn't necessarily mean book knowledge. She believed that everyone had something to share with someone else, that we all had a special gift, a special talent. And she showed me how important it was that whatever our gifts would be, to share them with others and to share them patiently. I can remember her spending time with me, teaching me to cook, teaching me to crochet, and she was more than willing to share those gifts with anyone who wanted to learn. My grandmother always sewed her own clothes. These are two fabric pieces that I was given after she passed. I never did anything with them. I think the beauty in them is that these pieces of fabric were going to be dresses that my grandmother was going to wear. You could see the patterns, how precious they are. And I treasure those two pieces of fabric from my grandmother. Number four, she taught me to never put an emphasis on money. My grandmother passed at 90 years old. I was 25. I cannot tell you one monetary gift that she gave me. Now, I know there were gifts she had given me. I know that. Birthdays, Christmas but I cannot remember one of them. And I am being totally honest with you. What I do remember was the gift of her time. And I will emphasize that again. The next time you are going to bless someone with an expensive monetary gift, think of how much more they would probably appreciate your time. Here are two embroidered pillowcases she had created. Look at the workmanship of this embroidery. It just brings me such joy to know that my grandmother truly grasped the concept of true frugality. She always lived below her means. She didn't drive a fancy car. In fact, she never even drove. She lived life to the fullest. She truly did. She understood that a person's worth was not in how much money they made or how much money they were worth, but in what they shared of themselves. And we can apply that today, now, more than ever. When we think about those people in our lives that we touch and that we bless, we need to remember it's not about the monetary aspect of touching their lives. It's more about our time and our talents and our gifts being shared. And with that being said, here is a picture of my Nonna, probably circa sometime in the 1970s. Now for the part that I am so excited to share with you my nonna's Italian Sunday gravy recipe. I do deviate in one little way from her original recipe, and you will see that. Here it is, comforting, rich, and steeped in tradition. 
Let's turn the camera around and get into the kitchen. To begin, we're going to make my Nona's Italian meatballs. She always used plain ground beef. I know some people say, oh, you need to put pork in it, veal. She always used straight beef. That's what I'm using. So there's a pound of ground beef. We'll also need one egg, a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese, a half a cup of breadcrumbs, salt, pepper, and some Italian seasoning. And if you don't have Italian seasoning, this is basically dried basil, oregano, little sage, garlic, and marjoram. We're gonna add our egg. Half a cup of breadcrumbs. I usually do half a cup of breadcrumbs for every pound of meat. Some black pepper, Italian seasoning to taste. And we're gonna add about a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And at this point, you're going to add some salt to taste. Now I'm just gonna mix this together. You wanna handle it as little as possible. My hands are washed and clean, and that's how I do it. I just get in here and mix this all together. I took a cookie sheet that has a rim to it, and I just put a rack on top that I lightly greased. You're gonna to wanna to line the cookie sheet with foil because you're gonna catch a lot of drippings and it's just so much easier to clean, honestly. And then I just take the meat mixture and I make it into about one and a half inch meatballs. Put them on the lightly greased rack and then we're going to bake them in a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. We don't wanna cook them thoroughly, we wanna brown them off. The one pound of meat made about 14 golf ball size meatballs. We're going to put them in a 400 degree oven now for 10 to 15 minutes just to brown them. The meatballs are in the oven. Now we're gonna continue on with the rest of the ingredients for Nona's sauce. Here I have one pork neck bone. And what I did was I just asked the butcher at my local store if he could get me some pork neck bones and they were cheap. You have never tasted a more flavorful, rich tasting pasta sauce than if you have added a pork neck bone. Honestly, very, very, very delicious. I have one link of hot Italian sausage, three links of sweet Italian sausage. You're going to need some really good olive oil. I have two cans here, one of tomato sauce and one of diced tomatoes. They're 28 ounce cans. I just prefer the no salt added because I want to add my own salt, but you can use whatever kind you prefer. Two cloves of minced garlic, a half of onion chopped, and I just have a bunch of basil leaves that were frozen in my freezer but you're gonna want a nice dash of either dried or fresh basil. And this is going to be the makings of Nona sauce. So let's get over to the stove. In this pot, I have one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. You're going to want a heavy bottom pot, a pot that can simmer sauce for several hours on the stove. Now I'm going to take my sausage. and my neck bone. And I'm gonna brown all of this together. You can hear the meat sizzling. We just pulled the meatballs out, they came out perfect. They cooked at 400 for just about 10 minutes. We're going to let these just sit for a minute, we're not going to add them yet. Our meat is browning wonderfully. We don't wanna cook the meat all the way through. We're just giving it a real good browning. What I do also is I gently poke holes in the sausage to get some of that grease out. Here's our pork all browned beautifully. As you can see, there is a lot more oil in here. I'm gonna be honest with you, we're gonna deviate from Nona's recipe just a little bit. She would have used this fat. 
I can't do it. I, I just can't. It's too much animal fat. So what I'm going to do is let this just cool slightly because it is very, very hot. And I'm going to drain this out, but I'm not going to scrape the pan. I want all that browned bits on the bottom. I'm going to take the animal fat out and then we'll add a little bit of fresh olive oil. While you are frying these, the splatter is crazy. You want to be really careful. I know I'm mothering you, but that's okay. You don't want to get those splatters on your skin. Keep it low and slow and they'll come out perfectly. Now I'm gonna take about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. I've drained out all the animal fat. Put that heat on medium. Let that heat up just a little bit. Now I'm just gonna take the onions and put them in. And this is going to start to glazing our pan. You wanna cook the onions till they're soft and translucent. So take your time cooking these. Continue to scrape the bottom as you're doing so. Now these onions are not burnt. They have just picked up the coloring from the bottom of the pan, the scraping. Now I'm gonna add the garlic and the basil. And we're just gonna cook that for a minute. Now, be careful when you're pouring this, it's gonna splatter, it's hot. We got the one can of tomato sauce and the one can of crushed tomatoes. You can use diced tomatoes, you can use crushed tomatoes, whatever works for you. And then Nona would always take and rinse the cans with water. As you can see, there's still so much sauce left. You don't wanna waste that half a can in each. So all together, it will be one can of water. And don't worry, it looks watery. It's going to thicken beautifully. Add the pork, neck bone, the sausages, and we're gonna carefully add our meatballs. You know. Now comes the hard part, the waiting for this delicious sauce to cook. You're going to bring it to a boil, covered, and then you're going to continue to cook it on low, all we want to do is simmer it for several hours. The tomato sauce has come to a boil. I am going to lower it all the way down now to a simmer. And I am just going to let this simmer for several hours or until we check that pork bone that's in here and the meat is going to be full off tender. I'm going to tell you what you're not seeing in this sauce. You're not seeing tomato paste and you're not seeing oregano. Tomato paste makes sauce bitter. Now that's just the way my family has always done it. We've never added tomato paste. And oregano, that's a seasoning that belongs in a pizza sauce, but not on a pasta sauce. That's just how we were brought up in the Italian home to do. This has been at a gentle simmer for six hours now covered on the lowest temperature possible during those six hours i would stir it every 20 minutes this is the type of meal you make on a day when you know you're not going anywhere and you can just let it simmer and just gather those rich delicious flavors look at this sauce do you remember how watery it was then look at it now all the tomatoes are cooked beautifully. We're gonna be eating in just a few minutes. Did you see how that meat is just falling off this pork bone? You know this is going to be a very delicious Sunday gravy. Our gravy is done. Now what I do is I just take a couple of spoonfuls of the gravy and I mix it in to the pasta. This prevents it from sticking. It coats all the pasta beautifully. You don't want to take plain white pasta, pile it on a plate, and then add your sauce on top. It's this beautiful pot of gravy has got all this meat in it. We're just going to take the meat out and put it in a separate bowl. This way, everyone can help themselves, the sausage, the meatballs, the pork neck bone, which is probably the most delicious part of this entire sauce. 
Paul is going to be our taste tester. Give Nona Louise's gravy a taste. Okay, I got some pasta here with some gravy in it. Let's try it out. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Much different than a jarred sauce. Oh, yeah, no. Much better than a jarred sauce. Absolutely. The taste of it is fantastic. It's just so fresh. It just has a fresh taste. The meat is delicious. It's kind of a sweet sauce. It's awesome. Paul approved. Paul approved. There are really no words to describe the taste of that sauce. Okay? I could sit here and give you every adjective. Mouth-watering. Delicious. Astounding. I mean, I could. You have to try it to understand the taste of that sauce. You saw I did deviate by dumping some of the animal fat out. Nona never dumped that out, never. She would have been angry with me if she was here that I did. The other thing I just wanna point out is, as the pork neck bone cooks down, little pieces of bone can fall off of it. So be very careful for those little pieces of bone in the sauce while you're eating it. Make this recipe. You will not be sorry. Make it for a holiday. Make it for a special occasion. You will not be disappointed. Today's question of the day is, please leave me one frugal living tip that any one of your grandparents left you that you still hold near and dear and true to you from a grandfather, a grandmother, paternal, maternal, please share that down below. It will not only encourage us, but it will encourage our viewers as well. We thank you so much for sharing this special, special video with us. It means a lot to me that you were here for it. Thank you. We ask that if you enjoyed it, take just a moment and hit that thumbs up button. You have no idea how much that helps us out in the world of YouTube. Subscribe if you have it. Come on in and be part of our frugal family. We ask you to stay well. We ask you to be safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God bless you.